Florida, the most conducive environment for just about every species of animal. And yes, the creepy crawly ones too. I got a special request from one of my subscribers named Brett. He said, I just moved here to Florida and a video on bugs and spider would be really useful. Can you do that? So here you have it, a video on spiders. First, when talking about spiders, I want to get a few things straight. All spiders are venomous. Some have very little or no effect on humans. In fact, there's only about two species of spiders you really would even have to worry about here in America. The first one being this one, the black widow. If you think you may have spotted a black widow, one of the easiest ways to tell without finding the spider itself is looking for those egg clusters. Black widow egg clusters are spiky or thorny, it's unique to this species. If you see this, you found either the black widow or the brown widow, which is not a native species of spider here. The brown widow has established breeding populations here in Florida. Now, if you're not scared of spiders, but you don't want the harmful ones like brown and black widows around, consider leaving the cellar spider alone. Even though it's not a native species of spider, they're actually called the black widow hunter. They hunt and track down and inhabit the black widow's burrows and out compete them for resources. They are pretty much harmless. If you want to learn more about the cellar spider, feel free to go back and check out my video on that. It's called the Black Widow Hunter. This cute orchard spider, green in color with the bright orange underside, kind of reminiscent of an hourglass, but actually there's three dots and looks more like a smiley face. These guys are harmless and often coexist in other spiders webs like the golden orb weaver. That's right, the golden orb weaver commonly known as the banana spider. Now, the banana spider is the largest spider species here in Florida. In fact, the total length of its legs can be up to six inches long, with the abdomen or body being no more than two inches long. These babies are excellent web makers. In fact, her spider silk is one of the strongest known materials to man and super durable, almost elastic in nature. And we're still doing a lot of research to try to determine how that is. Now, working with spiders over time has allowed me to reduce my fear of spiders. However, some just still creep me out. But these banana spiders, not so much. Just the fact that they're so large makes you feel like they could do a lot of damage. But they don't really bite humans, they don't consider us prey items, and they're pretty much harmless. It's true that the more you work with something, and the better you understand it, the less likely you are to have a fear of it. So, me working with spiders hand in hand has gone a long way. Here's a few of the creepy ones that I actually was able to touch. Right here is a very large spider specimen. If you look at him, he's actually kind of clumsy. He doesn't want to be sitting upright like this. Naturally, they tend to hang upside down in the tree. What you don't see is that he's already spun a series of little webs in order to support his weight to keep him braced on the branch. The many different appearances spiders take is quite amazing. This one here has that white almost skull looking design on his back and he was found on a hackberry tree to which the lichen that grows on hackberry trees matched that orb weaver almost perfectly. It's like these creatures almost have a sense of where they belong. Many of these orb weavers are nocturnal. They spin a web at dusk, catch all the prams they need, but then ingest the web again for its body to reallocate those resources and build new webs the following dusk having it down by dawn and preventing any predators detecting them throughout the day. If you're impressed with the tropical orb weaver's camouflage, try to spot this banded fishing spider. It's almost invisible to the naked eye. It wasn't until I nearly touched it that it actually decided to go ahead and move. And the only reason I spotted it was because it moved. Of course, in an attempt to conquer my fear of spiders, I had to touch it. Man, that thing's creepy. It moves so fast in sideways motion. You can commonly find these spiders around waterways. It's pretty much harmless. Now, the more spiders I see, the more I realize just how pretty they are. This one looks a lot like the golden orb weaver, but it's a little different. This is actually the garden spider. If you see these intricate zigzags in the web, then you pretty much have the garden spider. Not quite as big as the golden orb weaver, but plays a crucial part in our ecosystem to get rid of those pesky mosquitoes. Oh wait, without mosquitoes, maybe we wouldn't have these beautiful spiders. 
It's weird how the balance of our ecosystem actually works. The jumping spider. Small in size, but not in heart. Pound for pound, these are some of the most agile spiders of all. And it's been known that they'll leap onto their prey items. Now this is a little one. There's other species that are quite larger, and I'll show those in a later video. The brown recluse. Just the name sends chills down my spine. But this isn't a brown recluse. This is a pale spider. See how easy it is to misconceive what a spider actually is and think it's something harmful when in fact it's not? This is the pale spider, and this is it in comparison to an actual brown recluse. If you look at the brown recluse, you can see why they call it the violin back. Because on his back, there's a perfect silhouette of a violin. A small arboreal spider with a large abdomen, lined in spikes. Now I don't know if those spikes are to deter predators or to attract a mate, but you can see the resemblance to a hermit crab. That's why they call this one the crab spider. It's amazing how the different characteristics of a spider give it its name. This is an ambush predator. It'll defend its young from life or limb. This wolf spider was injured, having one good leg on its right side, but yet never leaving its sack behind. The most important thing to this spider is protecting its brood and ensuring its genes survive. I guess we do have some similarities to spiders. After all, they are more afraid of us than we are of them. With so many different species of spiders here in Florida, there was no way I could cover them all. But if you could just do me a huge favor and hit that like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I got lots more good videos coming out, and hopefully we'll see you again in the great outdoors. I'm your host, Alex, the Florida Wildlife Guy. When I was a child, I remember my father finding a yellow rat snake in our birdhouse. He told me about the circle of life, and through time I learned about the balance of our ecosystems. Every day a new adventure, a new creature, shows like the crocodile hunter. It became my goal to catch every species of animal possible. Then YouTube came along and gave me a platform. Now I can share with my subscribers. Thanks for your support, it means a lot to me, the Florida Wildlife Guy.